Atiku's aide accuses Tinumbu of seeking to store release of FBI files. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. Vice President Atiku Abubakar's Special Assistant on Public Communication, Frank Shaibu, has accused President Bola Tinumbu of attempting to block the release of details of his alleged criminal investigation by American authorities. Tinumbu's lawyers in the U.S. have filed motions to appear in an ongoing Freedom of Information action against the FBI and CIA, where records that may help answer questions about Tinumbu's real identity and decades-long endeavors are domiciled. Joining me to discuss this is Frank Shaibu. He is the aide to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar on communications. Dr. Shaibu, we greet you. It's good to have you. Good to have you on the program. You wrote, you wrote a very engaging piece. I said, would you be kind enough to give a synopsis or a summary of the piece to our viewers? Well, I did. Well, the statement is quite clear. Uh, the statement is quite clear. Uh, we just reiterated uh, that you recall when we were asking for the CSU, re CSU records of Bola A. He went to two different courts to block the release of those documents. And that if the documents were re released, it's actually, literally in a messy traffic situation on a rainy evening in Abuja. I hope we can get him back, but we try our best possible to make sure that we get back to him. Um, he wrote a piece the uh, day before yesterday to the effect that uh, the lawyers of President Inubu in the United States of America are trying to forestall, uh, forestall a pronouncement of court instructing the FBI and CIA to make public their dossier. The dossier they have on, uh, on Bola Metinubu, uh, however, I can't give uh, a much detailed, detailed account of the allegations in the in the letter as much as the person involved. It's just unfortunate that um, his diary has been managed um, in such a way that. He, he, he is still on the road uh, for a previously arranged, a previously, um, a previously scheduled TV uh, interview. However, still on the topic of President Tinumbu uh, seeking to stall the release of FBI files. Uh, we may have to go to my my next guest. Uh, my my friend and brother, Frank Shaibu, Doctor Frank Shaibu, which should not be a stranger to you because uh, I want to believe that you've been you paid your dues in in this game well enough to to know those who work for. Uh, we work for the Reds and we work for the Blues. Uh, uh, he is claiming in a recent publication 
that President Bola and Metinumbu's lawyers are trying to forestall uh, a pronouncement of court to the effect that the CIA and the FBI should release the dossier that they have on, on him. Uh, I hope you must have read the piece. What is your take? Uh, well, thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, we must be very, very weary of uh, uh, a movement that is uh, making all attempts to hand over the sovereignty of our country uh, to another country. All attempts being made by the presidential candidate of PDP and all his followers is a clear show of a desperation and for someone that intends to preside over Nigeria as a president. Such character is not expected from him. If it is our winning election, there's a limit to which you should go. Every attempt that is being made by Atiku is over the bar. And as a patriotic Nigeria, I will sincerely advise him to have a rethink. Atiku Abubakar Salam, Yakubu Gowon, Babangida, and Jonathan, they have a very impressive composure. And that is why every part of Africa calls on us to give us a model. Why since 1967 to 70, we have never had another incident that we want to dislocate Nigeria. What I'm saying in essence is that our country is the envy of another country. So, and if there's an individual because of aspiration, you are trying to incite Nigeria against Nigeria, I don't think it is a good thing. So, now, addressing the issue in, in, in particular, uh, we, we should look at the integrity of our president. We should look at his qualification. But there are acceptable standards of ascertaining of the qualification of Mr. Gola Oba if you are our president. There's a limit. Because Mr. Gola Oba has a life to live. Beyond his life as a four year tenor president or eight year tenor as the case may be. So in the name of uh, trying to ascertain my qualification you must not rupture the rest of my life for me. Which is the attempt being made on Tinubu. He has his own life to live. And there's a limit to which you can push such uh, conjectures that he's qualified, he's not qualified, he's using speech certificate, he's not using speech. There's a limit to it. That's that. So, the direction... Hello, 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 Razak. Yeah, I can hear you. Without wanting to debunk the, the veracity of the argument that speaks to the desperation of Atiku, yeah. uh, as you have, you know, you have submitted, without wanting to debunk that, one cannot but also look at the argument uh, one of the arguments of Atiku's, uh, Atiku's uh, spokespersons, and indeed Atiku himself in the last uh, World Press Conference he held, that he was doing it for the public good of Nigeria. Would you, as a Nigerian, not be happy that we have somebody that has the resources to unravel to unravel the whole essence of uh, the person who is the iconic personage of 
the country that we call ours. Is that is that too is that too strange a fact to accept by you? Well, if, if it is an attempt to press Nigeria, it's it, it good to the extreme. Because if you pursue agenda of the religion to a point where the rest of the world is seeing Nigeria as a comic, as a cartoon, is that projecting our image for good? And that's why in the, re in the rest of the world, we must adopt their method. There's a limit to which an aspiration must push you. The, the people of that country will interject you. And that's why we are telling you that this is the right moment for us to interject you. That uh, if it is the interest of Nigeria, that interest is not well protected. And that is why you cannot submit the integrity of Nigeria to CIA, to FIB, in the name I, I, I of trying to say, establish I, I the qualification say, of a president. Hello, hello Raza. When, when, last, say, when last did anybody come to Nigeria to submit the profile of their president to us, to, to ascertain for them? Just because he's put in America. So, uh, so this is not correct for us. Uh, uh, Razak. Uh, yeah. I, I, I must, for the sake of our viewers, I must put some facts straight. The, the action that led to a court of competent jurisdiction pronouncing that the dossiers that FBI and CIA have on Bola Metinumbu was not actually initiated by Atiku. Atiku is just playing, or Atiku's side is seemingly playing a fast one now. It was actually originated by Undei, the young journalist now in self-exile, and some of his American friends. Uh, as it is now, Maybe as a result of your submission that I'm not trying to fault about the desperation of Atiku, Atiku is like uh, giving it a form of amplification within our polity. Maybe because he thinks it's going to be, it's going to be useful for what he wants to achieve with the Supreme Court uh, accepting extra, extra or um, more evidence that were not initially used in his pleadings uh, at this juncture. So I need to put that straight. But having said that, uh, I also need to, and I also need to be at least uh, ask you that as a Nigerian, beyond the fact that you feel a bit diminished, that some of our compatriots are now going beyond our jurisdiction to, to use malicious, this thing to seek legal, legal, uh, legal advantage. Beyond that, do you personally as a Nigerian, do you feel there is a need for a more pronounced degree of transparency to be established about the people who, who uh, govern us. Yeah, of course, I agree with you. It, it's very important. Uh, the point you raise is very important. And that is why if you don't ask me certain questions, you don't expect me to answer it. And that goes to I need. If you don't, uh, if you don't ask me to establish certain thing about myself as an umpire that presides over who wins and declare a loss for a candidate in an election, I won't answer it. And that is why it's very important that uh, henceforth we have recommended to I that uh, I need ask the responsibility of training every political party. To, 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 to 
outline the limits every candidate for a position can pursue his circulation. Now, if that has happened, I think we will have known that um, he has gone beyond what is permissible as a candidate trying to fight for his candidate. I mean, for his, uh, my, for his mandate. So, and that is the question you are asking. Saying that it is it is very, very appropriate for INEC to also not limit the question and the findings and information about someone wants to become our president, the governor, only to where well, the date of birth and a few other things. Uh, if, the, if that has been established, the whole question of debate of whether the new finish in that school will not arise. It. And in fact, the whole issue of uh, whether Tinubu has finished in CSU is not beginning today. What so if, if we are bringing Razak. that one up to waste the time of Nigerians, Razak. or bringing the FIRCI reports? Yeah. Uh, uh, what if I tell you that you are not uh, quite fair to INEC? Uh, and the reason why I'm saying you're not quite fair to INEC is that if anybody should know, you are one of the most ranking members of the world of social activism that I know since I came back from, mm. from the diaspora. And mm. I know that you should know that INEC in many respects too has been castrated through, through, through plethora of litigations and pronouncement of courts that INEC can barely do perfunctory task of just getting basic information from candidates because INEC was once going in the direction that you just submitted, but the courts slapped INEC back that INEC could not disqualify candidates. It has to be the courts. INEC Whatever information that the candidates give to INEC should suffice if, uh, if opponents in the party or outside the party want to use that information against the candidate, they should go to the court. So I'm quite surprised that uh, you, of all people who should know, you are now slapping INEC back on, on what INEC had attempted before and the court slapped mm. INEC slapped uh, yeah, on the list. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. You, you, you know, me and you and a lot of others as know that this matter, that there's a need for INEC in more independence. You see, when you engage INEC with the uh, appointment of a chairman by the president or the governor, it's, a, it's an expectation that this is what I do to witness. When INEC is completely free, and the end of INEC emerges through the rank and file of that institution. Limitations from judiciary will not arise because there will be a lot of establishes. There will be legislation that applies to out his responsibility. And when it is a legislation that creates the content for what INEC should do, it's not going to be a matter of a judiciary again or going to court again. So I agree with you that. Uh, there's more to be done to assist INEC to be able to pass on his duty and responsibility, which is what me and you have been doing all these years. So I'm just reiterating it now that uh, INEC should be empowered more in terms of legislation, that if they should have more independency. If you want to have our country contesting as a politically advanced nation, a rocky shoulder with the rest of the world, INEC is one of the institutions that will get us there. And what I mean in essence is that uh, while recognizing the good things that INEC have done, registration of 100 million voters is impressive. The conduct of uh, officials of INEC in the last election is impressive. And a lot, a lot of other things. So you we said it's are impressive. not only them responsible for the uh, hello, hello, We are just making argument for them. Uh, hello, Razak. You said yeah. is, you said the conduct of INEC in the last general election is impressive, but there are some out there 
who really believe that INEC mm -hmm. was the was the major reason why their candidate uh, did not emerge as the uh, as the victor in the last presidential contestation, electoral contestation. Yes, if, if, if I know that this matter will have uh, come up, I will have uh, furnished you with the tabulation of an uh, incident since 1999 to 2003, serving up on the last election. You will have put it side by side, violence recorded, and a lot of incidents. The election that aired in February this year recorded the least incident. But because we're in the era of uh, social media, which has the capacity of misrepresenting issues, it, it appears as if this election is filled with violence, unprecedented. But that is not correct. People who have that kind of assertion should do a bit of more research. And the lazy uh, 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 aspect of uh, the, the, the today intellectual cause for a big concern. Because this matter has been open, debated, and closed. Why, if we open it again, it, it looks to me that people have that kind of uh, uh, position and people don't do their research correctly. Because in the face of uh, 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 statistics and data. You cannot contest that. We all know very well there were out of election where the president said that it's going to be a dry affair. And that election of that year recorded about the highest level of killings and assassination. So, for me, I'm as available in the record that we have, it is been tabulated not only by me, by local and international institutions. The last election is about the most peaceful election in the history of Nigeria since 1989. That's not contested. We see the record is there for us to do. So, so INEC needs a lot of uh, uh, instead of condition. They need a lot of support in terms of uh, how INEC should operate. It is important for every political party. In fact, it should be mandatory for political parties to train whoever that's going to become the president and the governor and senator and chairman, elected political position in Nigeria, that uh, there should be a level of engagement during and after election. And immediately you imagine as the president of Nigeria, that's what you are missing. Look at the entire world. There's what looks like political buryu in what we have been saying in ANEC in their own country. And they gave periodic training, seminar, by people like you and a lot of other, or others on what should be the character of your president, what should be the character of a candidate of a political party Razak. to become the president of Nigeria. Razak. So all these are important. And uh, that is what is missing in many of the candidates in Nigeria. And that's what gets us to the point we have today. Razak. Where we know how, we don't know where to have him to establish a limit. Razak. And that's what you can do and what you cannot do. Razak, we will go on a short break. But before we go on break, uh, when we come back, I'd like to put you through uh, the fact that uh, some of your colleagues in the local uh, in the elections, monitoring and uh, observations, uh, industry, quote unquote, if I may call it an industry, and some of the international observers, the spe specifically now the European Union uh, uh, observers, uh, observers Committee, uh, some of them didn't quite give uh, a report that is as uh, laudable or commendable as the one you seem to be giving now. But we go on a short break. When we come back, uh, we take it on more with, uh, with Razak Olokwaba, and likely we get through again to Dr. Frank Shaibo, Shabu, uh, the, uh, one of the prominent spokespersons of 
a former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Thank you. Welcome back to Plus Politics. This evening, we still I could not get through to Dr. Frank Shabu, uh, the author of the piece we are supposedly reviewing tonight. Unfortunately, uh, this was an interview he consented to two days ago. I was thinking he ought to have synchronized or kind of work his diary around the reality that he gave his word. But you see, the last time we called him, he spoke, was ready to speak, was ready to engage with us, but unfortunately, he was on the road in Abuja, and according to him, and I don't have any reason not to believe him, it was raining cats and dogs where, where he was. And unfortunately, since we've been trying again, the line has not been going. Uh, but fortunately, the gentleman that we had also invited for a form of rebuttal or uh, a kind of review of some of the contents of the, of the piece, that is uh, activist Razak Olokoba is still very much with us. Uh, Razak, before we went on break, I was, actually, I was actually pointing out to you that your summation or your summary of how the last general elections went, especially the presidential elections, seemed a bit more optimistic, a bit more positive than the impression that we've generally gotten from members of, uh, of the uh, elections monitoring and observation uh, industry, quote-unquote, in Nigeria, and some international observers, just, uh, and I specifically mentioned or alluded to uh, the opinion or the recommendations of the uh, European Union observers, uh, observers team. How would you respond to that? Ah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. There are so many institutions uh, that took part in the election. You look at the international. Um, just like your what you have mentioned. And the majority of reports that I have read uh, agrees with the mean that the election is not completely uh, absent. There's no absence of a focus of a limitation here and here. But if you add timely arrival of election material, the conduct of um, INEC staffs, the security personnel, the turnout, and method and pattern of uh, announcing of results. Because some of it, all these together, look at average. The uh, answer is there. Uh, uh, far more than uh, uh, is given in the past, which is an excellence. In 1999, there were apprehension that Absalom and Pakal may not go. There were also a challenge in terms of a boycott by Alliance for Democracy, NPA of um, uh, the former ZF uh, to Nigeria, who will contest against about the other time, register a lot of uh, concern, a lot of concern regarding the election. Eventually, when the election ended, the result was outrightly rejected, both by local and international. So, and there were a lot of violence in the build up to the election of 2023. That was when major personalities in this country were assassinated. One of them was Uncle Balagi, um, Ashamari, and a lot of other things. Due to for the election of 2007, 
And if you remember clearly, the election that produced Yaradwa, we knew the impression of the late president himself. It was so bad that uh, Yaradwa had to admit openly that the election that brought him to office was very flawed with the regions and so many things. So it, it, I can be able to say you know, that, uh, some of these specific details. But there were no social media at that time. And if you are talking about 2000 and, I mean, 1999, minus it from so, a majority of uh, young boys on social media now, they were three years old, four years old then. So nobody could have told them uh, a proper issue. Uh, apart from the fact that they have taken part in the, in the process. So for all who took part in the process, then I who took part in the process now, we are authority on the matter, more than the young people that have been on social media. So all, all I've said, putting side by side with the election that held um, in February, such with the turnout of election by voters, we had registered voters to the tune of 100 million Nigerians. That's huge. That's the force in this of Nigeria. And uh, but the turnout, but the turnout supposedly was not that very was not that very impressive. Uh, we had less than. Of w that should do with uh, what you tell your party member that didn't come out. We should blame PDP, APC, Labour, and uh, all of them for that. It's not. It's not about. It's not about INEC again. That. Uh, and what so would be? Uh, and what would be your response? Now. What would be your response to the fact that INEC may have mismanaged? Uh, expectation in respect of uh, of, of IREF, that is the instant uploading of uh, results from from polling units. What would be your you opinion know, about that? You know, election and technology that is not an error free process. Up to today, the election that brought in Trump is still being debated and investigated by FBI in America, including CIA. So, I'm not justifying or defending what I think my affair committed as an error. That's number one. So, if I say that I'm going to convey you with a white car, a particular destination, and I end up uh, conveying you with another car, even a uh, technical issue as inability, why will you blame me for not using a car that has technical issue? So that today, we will still be debating whether election head or election is in hold. I next said cyber uh, criminals attacked their uh, website over 1,000 times. If I were high neck, I would do the same thing. And it's better for any political party that have a problem with that. To also reject of those errors that have won. Labor is complaining about it. PDP is complaining about it. Let them reject the result of all the states that have won too, that they didn't accept that result. I never knew. Why must we have double standard? Uh, 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 you uh, uh, claim that uh, uh, the election will produce a governor. R Razak. In your state, is no okay. Razak. Yeah, because uh, the yeah, election that produces the president is not in your favor. You say, you, uh, you are using IRF as excuse. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you are being cynical now. I guess you have, you have been cynical. But let's wrap it up. Let's, let's wrap it up. Um, generally, uh, the three major political uh, characters in the polity now are uh, the incumbent president, President Bola Metinubu, uh, the vice president, the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, uh, uh, Dr. Peter Obi, they seem either directly or indirectly, maybe President Tinumbu is the one that is not quite uh, aggressively uh, doing it, but they seem to be uh, stigmatizing themselves, rubbishing their persona, their public persona, seem to be rubbishing their public persona 
And somewhat, you as an activist now, don't you think this, is, this may be rubbing negatively on the general belief of the average compatriot, you know, in the political system? How would you want to respond to that? Well, that's a, that's a, very, good, that's a very good question. And that question is a question journalists should be asking all of us. But are we happy about all this? That's the question we should be asked. How we should be asking each other. Uh, but you know, but uh, Olokwaba, uh, and, and, Olokwaba, uh, you, 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 know, you are an activist. For those of us who are on the other side of the divide, say, in journalism, especially when in journalism we know that salacious and sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, very, very fudgy, dodgy stories like this, they sell copies more, they give more mileage. Uh, like I often say, uh, the Sun newspaper sells more than the, the Sunday Times in England. Or uh, the National uh, Enquirer in, in New York or in America sells more than the New York Times. People like to read salacious stories. I guess, and especially in the age of social media, I guess you may be preaching at the deaf and the dumb with the kind of line that we're tracking with that uh, exhortation to journalists not to chase. As some like us who want to do uh, serious-minded journalism may not want to chase it, uh, uh, but some who want more eye, eye shots, likes, and all the knots may, may, find, it, may find this kind of stories um, uh, interesting for, for, to run with. Yeah, I, I agree with you that uh, bad news sells fast. And the orientation of uh, new seller journalism in the world today has created that universal challenge was. And our position as members of civil society sharply disagrees with such that any profession in your conduct, your focus should be of a nation building. Anything outside that, you are doing a disservice to, to your nation, that is, that is where to, to your country, it. and to the world. So, uh, 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 what, 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 what they are doing to each other now? Uh, Razak, are, that is where to leave it. Nigeria. We really must go now, Razak. Uh, thank you very much. You have been quite an engaging, engaging guest. We also want to thank you uh, more because uh, your, your availability uh, seems to have been uh, the, the cover for the unfortunate uh, development with uh, our, our first segment's guest. Thank you very much. Thank you, it's a pleasure being with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.